WNST Taos in Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. Some of us are lucky enough to be born here and stay. Others sometimes leave. We're having intelligent conversations around here. Uh, we are renaming them Wise Conversations because of our new uh, partnership with our friends at Wise Markets. I'll be telling you more about that. I've been shopping at Wise forever. I'll be telling stories, ordering online, doing all of that cool stuff, including get some rewards points as well. But uh, Rich Johnson has been my friend for the better part of three decades. Uh, he was a founder of something called sportspages.com, which was something that was integral, as they would say, or integral, as I would say, uh, at the turn of the century when I was nationally syndicated to literally take the sports page of every newspaper and put it onto one of them web pages, add on the interwebs uh, back at the turn of the century. Uh, you know, I consider you, Rich, a, um, a pioneer who took the arrows going across the mountain of the World Wide Web. How are you? It's good to have you on, bro. Yeah, greetings from uh, Las Vegas, which is uh, the new home forever. Uh, if you're uh, looking on the video, you can see I'm rocking the green and gold times two, the Seattle Supersonics on my head which is a, a retro hat to be sure. Yes, we're still bitter. and I never, never coming back, Oklahoma. by the way. Never That's coming back to Oklahoma City, I know that. Get a crack and hat and move on, you know? Yeah, yeah. But the real rep is right here on my chest. Quack. With the original Walt Disney-designed Oregon duck. Dude, you right. were an Oregon fan before, like, even Bilotti got there, before it was, like, even fun, right? Before they started. Oh, I, I, even, well, I'm, before, I'm an Oregonian. I'm a native yeah. Oregonian. So I was going there cheering for Dan Fouts, and then booing his successor, Norv Turner, at quarterback back in the early 70s. Were you wearing Nike like in the early 80s and thinking you were doing something good for Oregon? My first Nike pair I bought in 1974. Wow. Uh, a royal blue reflective uh, low top sneaker. Uh, I, I think they had only been called Nike for maybe a year. By, they didn't even by call it point. Swoosh then. They didn't even have the name no. Swoosh. They had the, they had the logo. The guy paid, uh, you know, if you read uh, Phil's book, it, he paid 100 bucks or something uh, to a, a woman at Portland State University for the design. Later on, he gave her some stock, and so she, she did fine. But, but, yeah, that was still a brand-new deal. He wasn't selling them out of the back of his car anymore, but he was uh, definitely uh, starting to make his mark. Well, look, I call this show Baltimore Positive, right? Because, yeah. like, you spent a formidable amount of time uh, here in, in Maryland in yeah. the DMV. You covered the White House, which I find fascinating. Uh, I've been to the White House and been on the podium and all that. You invited my wife and I down every day of the Obama administration, <laughs> the end of the Bush administration, and we never went, right? But, you know, maybe one day we'll make it back. But, You've had like this, you're a radio guy, literally, right? I mean, that's your background, as I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just put, thinking about it. And I was in high school 50 years ago, and I was working on the little 1,000-watt daytimer in Hillsboro, Oregon, which is about 20, 25 miles west of Portland. The thing actually just went off the air a couple of years ago, playing, uh, you know, Montevante and Andre Castellanitz and stuff like that. And it was a big thrill when we, every now and then, you got to play something as rockin' as the captain in Tennille. So, mm. yeah, been a while. With what they then would call middle of the road. But, you know, then you find yourself yeah. at the White House. You started the sports pages. Dude, I don't even know how I know you other than I use sports pages. And a lot of people, I mean, I promoted it on WNST in 1999 yeah. that there was this web page called sports pages where you could read the Chicago Sun-Times yeah. if you wish to. Yeah, back in the days when most of the papers gave away their stuff, which also turned out to be, you know, one of the reasons we're in this hideous uh, situation today when it comes to journalism and paying for it. You know, that stuff costs money to do. And uh, sports pages could not and does not exist today because of that. But I came to Baltimore. I came to D.C. in 1985 to go work for the Associated Press after a, about nine months in Atlanta after moving from Seattle. I have to confess, the second weekend I lived in uh, in uh, D.C. in uh, 19, early April, right after opening day, Guess what I did? I drove to Baltimore because I wanted to see a real city again. I wanted to go see the O's up on But you didn't grow up with baseball where you were, right, if you grew up in Oregon, no, I, right? I, I grew up with the Portland Beavers, AAA team. I saw Sam McDowell. I saw Louis Tiant. I saw a couple of uh, – a few other guys so, uh, in the uh, single-A uh, division back in 1975 when the Portland Mavericks were around. I saw that Jim Bouton's comeback debut. I saw Kurt Russell play for his 
that team that was owned by his father, Bing Russell. If you haven't seen Battered Bastards of Baseball on Netflix, go see it. It's a, an amazing documentary about You always a, give the, me tips. Wait till we get to the food portion of this, Rich. Okay. You know? <laughs> anyway, I, for, if, if anybody watching, you know, I'm here bathed in sunshine out on my street here in uh, what we call God's Waiting Room, otherwise known as Sun City Summerlin, which is about 10 to 12 miles northwest of downtown Vegas. And uh, you, you've got that beautiful view of the, uh, the water, which I always envy. But I got, I got a mountain behind me here. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm okay. Hey, look, man, you went out to Vegas for the sunshine and, you know, the strip and all that. And uh, you had visited with me on my baseball tour back here in 15. We had some wings together uh, at the Buffalo Wild Wings on the, the night of the Nationals thing. It's, it feels like it's been a while since I've seen you. I've done your radio show. You, you're, uh, you've done some stuff with a comedian out in Hollywood and done various things on the Internet. But yeah. I think of you about food, and, and really the reason I called you, we can talk sports and we can have a good time, but I put something up about Crab Imperial uh, at Costas about six weeks ago. I got Crab Imperial in the mushrooms, which I think I, – I hadn't had that in about 20 years. In Dundalk, yeah. I always got crab-stuffed mushrooms because they were legitimate. And then, like, at a market, you get them at, like, a Friday's or something, they have fake crab in them, right, as we know. Oh, yeah, they're right? awesome. So you lived here, came from somewhere else, and don't sell me on that Dungeness crab or any nonsense, oh, nonsense. Oh, all right? please, please. But, but the Maryland blue crab, and you like, you really as an outsider, which you are because you're not from Maryland, yeah. you scoffed at putting anything on a crab in some way. Like, so I want to hear your take on this because I'm about to do a crab cake eating thing yeah. for the rest of my life like for, for for the rest of my career as long as i'm doing this i have made a decision that on fridays i'm gonna have a crab cake with people i like probably with a beer you know maybe with a delicious chip or a appetizer or a special potato or whatever the restaurant does but i think i want to try as many different kinds of crab cake because they're all different rich you know that right oh yeah like, absolutely you could say give me a steak and most of it kind of tastes the same seasoning or whatever but when you're talking about a crab cake they are all made differently and you know that well i was a crab snob being from the pacific northwest being raised on dungeness crab where you don't do much to it a one crab is is enough for a meal it's it's a it's a half a pound of meat you put it in a little butter you have a sourdough bread you have a nice uh, Riesling or an Oregon white on a stormy, nasty day looking at Puget Sound and, I and life is good. I could shred this paper up nah. and it would taste like Dungeness nah. Crab. No, nah, Dungeness nah. Crab have, doesn't have any flavor. It's delicate. You got to have some taste buds for it. But let me say that once I got to. I got to try hard, harder to taste to it, Rich? See, what? Oh, no. No. <laughs> once I got and, and appreciated and tried pounding crabs with a little wooden mallet and. and Butcher paper. I appreciate that very much. Summer day, pile of crabs, pitcher of beer, corn on the cob. Even like with, with Chesapeake shore. Bay That's seasoning wonderful. on your fingers, though. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. Okay. I'm I'm down with Maryland crabs. I've lost my snobbery. I also, and I'm sure you agree with me here too. Don't mind heading down to Joe Stone Crabs at Miami Beach and having some of those babies. Oh, That's a hey, whole other kind of crab listen, experience. Listen, when, when they get shipped north and I can get my hands on them, I'll buy yeah. a pound or two twice in off season and get the mustard. When I'm yeah. in Florida, it's the first thing I want to do. And yeah. I'll never forget, I was on a Ravens trip um, early in a year. It might have been the one that um, – that, McAllister ran off on Billick like 15 years ago. <laughs> and I'm in the lobby of the Weston Diplomat, which is now shut down in Hollywood, Florida. It's crazy. It's a beautiful historic hotel. And the Ravens used to stay there all the time. And I remember being in the lobby. My wife and I were all worked up about getting stone crabs. We're like, oh man, Billy's is right up the street. We'll go. And yeah. Ozzy heard me in the lobby. He's like, can't get any stone crabs, bro. And I'm like, what? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I did the research. It's not, it's not the right month. You know, it's whatever the yeah. May, October, whatever the month was, we were there in the wrong month. And there it's were no snow crabs. Yeah. And I was just crushed that we couldn't get them. But look, I love crab, right? I, I um, spoke of this uh, to someone. This is something for you because you've traveled the world. In Australia, they eat something called a Morton, M-O-R-E-T-O-N, Morton, M-O-R-E-T-O-N, Morton Bay Bug, Morton Bay Bug. Um, they oh. call it a bug, but it's basically a little bit of a horseshoe crab kind of thing, but it's more lobstery. 
in its texture and its flavor and its sweetness. And I fell in love with it. And once I tried it, I'm like, what the hell is a bay bug? Are you serving like snails? What are, <laughs> no, no, no. And I Googled it and figured it out and I ordered it. I ordered it like five more times on the trip figure and I would never get it again. I've never yeah. heard of it anywhere. I did see like a, maybe a Zimmern or a Bourdain. Somebody did something on that. But like, I love crab. But when I talk to Zimmern and have him on the show or I talk to food people, they all, Bobby Flay, you know, when I talk to him, they all mention wanting to come here and get that. And if you don't yeah. want to mess your hands up, you get a crab cake. So I want to hear, I mean, Tell everybody how much you write about food on the internet. Tell them, how, seriously, you are my yeah. food friend. Literally, you I, are. I, I do a bit here and there on, on Facebook. I share a lot of stuff we've cooked here because in lockdown in this place, we've done a lot more cooking and I've gained a lot more shins in the past year. Well, you're one of those. Sure. This news came out last week that's gained weight during COVID. That's you. Okay. Oh, gosh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, crab, I tried the other day to uh, get on, I think it was Gold Belly or something like it, to order crab cakes from Fadley's and I was willing to pay the 120, 130 bucks for the crab cakes. Well, I Fadley's has willing. been my sponsor forever. Yeah. And I would highly, if you oh, want I've been crab there. cakes, I, I tell everybody Fadley's and Costas are my places, ship them, yeah. order them, get them both because they are different. If you, you, the, you, you will have two different is. experiences yeah. and they'll both be glorious. I was ready to pay the 120 or something for four crab cakes from Fadley's. I was not ready to pay another 130 for the shipping. So uh, I got to, I got to find some alternative there. Well, you know what, man, it, you know, this is where we are. When you get the taste for it, you, yeah. uh, if I oh, order yeah. Morton Bay bugs right now or stone crabs or whatever, that's just kind of the way this thing rolls. But when you're here and you get off a plane, you would go to Fadley's. Fadley's is your place. That, that's what you're hankering. I would do that or I'd head to a Ricky's when it was still around. That was wonderful. And, um, uh, what else? See, I was not a Brickies little, little. guy, right? Not, not, yeah. I've never had thing. a Brickies crab cake, but their <laughs> crabs were not traditional Maryland crabs. And I did not know that until I went there 15 years ago. Oh. But they served their crabs with like white pepper. It was like really It's a black bizarre. pepper. It's a different kind of thing. Yeah, instead of the cayenne of a, the old bay like a thing, it was a black pepper based thing there, their own proprietary thing. And I, I like to have it once in a while to be different. And, and the restaurant is very pleasant. Spoken very like nice. Dungeness crab guy. Rich Johnson is here. What are you doing with your life? You're like in semi-retirement, doing some radio, doing some comedy, doing some news. What, what are you doing on that street in Summerlin, Nevada, other than socially distancing? Uh, trying to learn to play golf. I got three golf courses in this complex that I'm part of. And, you know, pay 20 bucks a round card included. And uh, it's been going really bad. When it comes to learning how to play golf, I'm podcasting a lot. I produce, I'm not, I'm not a voice on it, but check uh, On the Corner of Main Street. That is a podcast done by the Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Vegas. It's the only weekly podcast done and produced and hosted by the CEO of a Vegas casino. So Give, uh, give me a little primer on Vegas because... I had JT the Brick on a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me about this outdoor sports book with pools, and he was showing me it's downtown. And I pulled oh, yeah. it up, and I, I had some fun with it. The Ravens are going to play there this year, right? Like, I'm still oh, – oh, as many dude. times as I've been in Vegas, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the notion of football in Las Vegas, uh, you know, across that boulevard from, you know, yeah. down there where Mandalay Bay and uh, the hockey rink are. Uh, some, some thoughts about Vegas post-COVID. Six months from now. I had a friend that was out there this weekend for basketball. Uh, what's up, Terry? Um, your thoughts about what, what to expect? I mean, I, I think, and I've told everybody, first things first, it, when the plague's over, I will be on the lawn having a beer at Merriweather. That will let me know the plague is over. But I would say for this calendar year, my sincere hope is to be at the Ravens Raiders game in Las Vegas. It's our exotic trip this year. I hope that it's a, later in the year, November, December, whatever, so we have a better chance. What do you see for Vegas in the fall? Oh. When can Vegas get well quickly? As I guess is what I'm asking. You. It, it's getting there because of the tourism situation. A lot of the, um, the, the the feared third or fourth wave of COVID is not happening here because the <clears throat> vaccination rate has been uh, very high. I, I've had my two shots. It's been, it'll you. be two weeks Friday. So I'm, I'm good to go. And a lot of others have. The, the mask mandate has worked. A lot of folks come here, maybe they get COVID, but then they're going back home. 
I mean, this has been one busy weekend, the first weekend of the final four of uh, March Madness, where they're almost back to uh, pre-COVID levels of two years ago. I stayed Everything's away. open in Vegas, though. Literally, this may Pretty be not much. fully, but yeah. I can walk in any casino. I can get a room anywhere. I can stay there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And when you come, I'm going to get you and Jen off the strip, off downtown. I'm going to mm. take you up to these mountains and, and, and let you see what the heck this area looks like. I've said uh, many times after coming here, if I never set foot in another casino again, I could, I could live here. As a, as a Northwest guy, I was a real rain snob. I said, I love the green. I like the rain. What the heck's the problem with the rain? And then I come to a place with 350 days of sunshine a year, and I'm thinking, hey, this is not bad at all. Rich, you're doing okay, dude. I'm getting, I'm getting the Johnson <laughs> tour of the Summerland estate. Rich Johnson's yep. been my friend for uh, going on 25 years. He was at uh, once sportspages.com, then covering the White House. I, before I let you go, I got to get a yeah. White House update from you. Um, and what you saw the last couple of years. And I mean, it wasn't long ago that you were, yeah. you had that job recently, right? Like probably I, in the last seven, eight years. I, I left Fox in uh, 2014. Uh, I'd stopped doing the White House about three years uh, before. I did about the first year, year and a half of uh, Obama. And then would come in there and fill in for the, for the regular guy. I was on the road doing Super Bowls and coal mine disasters and hurricanes and stuff like that for the last three years. So that was a great bit of variety after seeing the world on uh, Rupert Murdoch's dime on the White House charters in Air Force One. I'm very, very happy that I missed the past four years of being in that room. I've, I've got friends there still, and I would... Uh, talk to them and, and talk to them on, on Twitter and Facebook. And they said it was just, just torture. It was such an aberration. It was. Well, the gaslighting you know, part of the media and the gaslighting part of, you know, there is no plague. It's a democratic yeah. hoax. Put bleach in your arm, all of those things. And, and the, the part for me as a citizen appalled and, and I stand yeah. appalled. And if you voted for him, God bless you. But I stand appalled at all of it. Um, but I, I would say this, that as a reporter and as someone who did this for a living in that environment, I've done it where a coach is trying to lie to me uh, about yeah. whether the quarterback's got it can be an ankle or not. Right. I mean um, that, but that also becomes my product, right? If the coach says he's good and he's healthy and I just parrot that on the radio and he's not, not only for those with an inducement to wager yeah. out in your part of the world, Las Vegas, but just, you know, your word, you know, like parroting, what Sarah Huckabee Sanders is saying is just something that um, I find to be a little bit detestable as a citizen, but even more so as a reporter where yeah. I'm in there trying to get facts for the American people. Simply, as, that's all you were yeah. trying to do. As a public information professional, be you at the White House or be you in Hollywood or for a big corporation, uh, you know, Hollywood, those guys, we all know they lie. That's what they're, they're paid for. But if you're on the public payroll at the White House or the Commerce Department or, or the, the local Sheriff's Department, you can no comment your head off. You can prevaricate. You can duck. You can dodge. But if you blatantly look at somebody or a camera and lie, your credibility is gone. And all those people from Sean Spicer to Sarah Sanders to, to everybody that followed lost their credibility the minute almost they took on the, the first podium, time though, literally. exactly because well, they the, sat the there expectation and lied. is for you to lie you, yeah you and that's that. not political that's just credible and and that's why i was so happy to not be there yeah it was uh it was tough uh you know we're you're off the political beat and onto the golf course rich johnson <laughs> joining us here uh, from las vegas uh, you're wearing your duck stuff uh oh, you yeah. know we're licking our turtle wounds, our turtle oh, soup yeah. against Alabama. I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was a, a basketball game, not a football game. And then, I mean, Alabama would have beaten Maryland that bad at football too. So yeah, there's that. Hey, you got the Terp women. They look pretty darn good though, and so did the Duck women last night. Wouldn't that be a matchup somewhere down the line? Well, there you go. So there, and, and we have <laughs> lacrosse season here, which is always in Maryland. You know that. Rich. Nobody knows what lacrosse is in Oregon. <laughs> All right, look, man. Uh, I'm gonna get out to Vegas. We're gonna find some yes. good pizza, some good tacos. Uh, you know, some good local stuff, and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I when the when the schedule comes out in three four weeks, you'll know the weekend I'm in Vegas, yep. brother. Let me know. I'll, I'll take care of you at the Plaza. Have you have a little downtown right across from Circa, the brand new joint you're talking about. I with a never sports book you will have not a problem adding a day on the front or the back of a Vegas trip. Yes, never, never yes. A 
And I've never been to Hoover Dam either, by the way. So we'll oh, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I've never been to Lake Mead. I've flown over it a thousand times. Yeah. We'll do that. Hey, go rent a boat and cruise around Lake Mead. If it's early in the season instead of late in the season, bring those swimsuits. There you go. It'll be 110 in the shade. Las yeah. Vegas, Nevada, Rich Johnson. It's been my <laughs> friend working on podcasts, doing great stuff, and the, the one-time proprietor of Sports Pages. But most, most importantly, I need to get a crab cake recommendation out of Rich. Yeah. I am Bring Nestor. some crab cakes on that plane when you come here. You know what? That's going to be my contribution. I'll stop at Fadley's. I'll stop at Costas. We will eat crab cakes on the, on the strip out in Vegas. How about that? Yes, yes, they're out here on my patio. I know they have a Joe Stone crab out there on the strip because I've yeah. been there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are WNSD.net, <laughs> AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive.